Project Zomboid is a fantastic game, and in my opinion, it's easily the best zombie experience on the market right now. Unlike most other zombie titles, Zomboid isn't just about killing the undead, although there is certainly plenty of that, but rather more of a simulation of what it'd be like to find yourself in a zombie outbreak. But rather than telling you why this game is so special, I'd rather just show you all, so sit back and enjoy One Week in Hell, a Project Zomboid story. Meet Dick. That's Dick as in Richard. Get your mind out the gutter, people. Now before the end of days, old Dick here was a police officer in Rosewood, as you can tell by sweet cop shades, but these days he's just potential zombie child just like everybody else. Now the first thing you want to do during a zombie outbreak is find yourself a decent weapon. A frying pan might not sound ideal, but it's more than capable of getting the job done in a pinch. Breakfast is also the most important meal of the day, so I went with a succulent peach to provide Dick with the nourishment he'd need to face the trials that awaited him. After breakfast, I continued searching the house for supplies and found a hunting rifle that Dick kept in his closet. While I prefer to keep things quiet, you never know when you might need to blast your way out of a sticky situation. Armed and feeling moderately dangerous, it was now time to head out, and it wouldn't take long for Dick to run to his first zombie, although he would make easy work of it. Shortly after this first encounter, Dick would run into two more zombies who he quickly dispatched of with his trusty frying pan, and as luck would have it, one of them was even wearing a fancy watch, which Dick would claim for himself by invoking the ancient law of finders keepers in addition to a pair of long gloves. These didn't provide any additional protection or anything, I just thought they made Dick look rather dapper. As the day wore on, Dick would take out a few more of the undead and continue to add on to his ensemble, and when searching a house for supplies, he'd come across a can opener, which is definitely one of the essential items you want to keep on hand in the midst of a zombie outbreak. And speaking of useful items, after dealing with an undead couple who evidently turned mid-coitus, Dick would take out a pesky peeping Tom who had a hand axe lodged into his back, which seemed like a better option than a frying pan. With such a hectic start to the day, I decided Dick had earned himself a bit of a breather and allowed him to relax a little bit by watching his favorite home improvement show. So we can attach the gutters to our fascia board using this bad boy, the Benford CO2 powered nail gun. Oh, yeah. While searching another nearby house, he would find the keys to the truck in the driveway, although sadly didn't have any gas in the tank. Once he made his way into the suburbs, Dick found himself being harassed by a number of the locals, but he was able to escape from the encounter unmolested, and one of the zombies was even in possession of a duffel bag, which would definitely come in handy. Dick then claimed one of the neighborhood's nicer houses for himself, although one of his new neighbors didn't seem to approve, and the previous inhabitants wasn't entirely thrilled about the whole arrangement. After settling these issues, I decided it was time for Dick to turn in for the night. Day 2 kicks off with some light early morning cardio while Dick waited on breakfast to cook. After finishing his workout and replenishing his energy with a delicious pork chop, he discovered that the taxi parked in his driveway still had some gas in the tank, which Dick was able to siphon and use to refuel that truck he had found yesterday. However, I decided against using it for now as vehicles are loud and have a tendency of attracting unwanted attention. During the trip back home, Dick stopped to loot a garage where he found a welder's mask, and over the next few hours, he also managed to get his hands on some propane torches and metal sheets, which he would use to barricade his first floor windows. While searching the neighborhood, Dick had also found a car parked across the street from his new house, and as luck would have it, the keys were still in the ignition and it had a quarter tank of gas. Of course, all work and no play would make for a very dull Dick, so after the renovations, I decided he earned himself a little time to unwind with a movie. After the movie, it was time to work on that fitness with more squats, followed up with some homemade oyster soup, just like Mama Dick used to make. With his basic necessities taken care of, Dick decided that the first half of day three would be focused on doing a little more scavenging and clearing up a neighborhood, but this would prove to be far easier said than done, as he would have a number of close calls, although old tricky Dick, again, somehow managed to come through all these completely unscathed. Still, Dick knew it wasn't smart to continue pushing his luck and look to acquire a weapon that didn't require him to get as up close and personal. This turned out to be a smart move as the shovel he ended up finding would prove itself to be far more effective when it came to crowd control. Still, Dick knew that a shovel wouldn't be enough for what he had planned and vowed to have the police station to stock up, but killing dozens of zombies does take a lot out of a guy, so it seemed like a good idea to get a quick nap in first. After waking up from his nap, it was time for Dick to head down to the station, although on the way he decided to stop at Mama McFudgington's first and snag a quick bite to eat. While there, one of the other customers tried to take a bite out of him, although luckily instead of a mouthful of dick, they just ended up chowing down some leather instead. Having narrowly evaded death and filled his belly full of sweets, Dick pressed onward. 
Dick arrived at the police station shortly after midnight and the first officer he encountered was supplying with a shotgun and a Desert Eagle. After heading inside, Dick took down a few more of his old co-workers, including one who had the keys to the armory, which Dick wasted no time in cleaning out. After heading back to the house to drop off some of his new goodies, Dick decided to take his car out for a spin, with the gas station to the north being his primary destination. Unfortunately though, this turned out to be a pretty popular hotspot for the undead as well. During the first day of the outbreak, Dick might have played it safe and turned back for home, but now that he'd seen the full extent of the mayhem and knew that his odds of being rescued were slim to none, he knew he had nothing left to lose. So instead, he decided to hold his ground and test out his new shotgun. It took four hours, nearly 100 shells, and even a handful of 9mm rounds, but Dick is eventually able to put down the massive horde that he attracted, which allows him to refuel his car and grab a few snacks from the store undisturbed before heading back to the house. Following his heroic exploits at the gas station, Dick had earned the right to take it easy, and day five would basically be a mental health day. His clothes were filthy, and it had been nearly a week since he'd taken a bath or shower, so Dick popped on over to the neighbors to clean himself up and do a load of laundry. He also sought to restore his faith in the Lord after all the horrors he'd seen during the week, but unable to find a Bible, he had to settle for listening to Raps for Christ, and while it was good for a laugh, I'm not sure it did much to ease his doubts. Still, during a zombie apocalypse, even a late day, still has to be somewhat productive, so Dick went out to get the truck he found during day one. His first stop was the Rosewood Medical Station to stock up on supplies, followed up with another trip to the gas station, which was thankfully a lot less busy than it had been during the previous day. After this, it was time for Dick to head on back home and turn in for the night. With his house now secure and sufficiently stocked, I thought it would be a good idea for Dick to spend day six locking down a secondary location. After all, there's no telling we may need to make a quick getaway, and it's always better to have somewhere to fall back to, rather than wandering around blindly. However, Dick would need some tools to reinforce the second base, so a trip to the local fire department seemed like a good idea. While the fire station didn't have everything I was hoping for, Dick was still able to get a few useful items, such as a saw, axe, and fire helmet. While there, he was even able to learn a little bit more about carpentry thanks to the Life and Living channel, although one of the former firefighters was apparently more of a Bob Vila type of guy. Upon leaving the station, Dick quickly discovered that the television had attracted a far more unsavory audience, although it was nothing that his pistol couldn't handle. While driving, Dick discovered a nice little house secluded out in the woods and decided to be the perfect location for his second base, but first he had to deal with the locals that had been drawn in by his car. Of course, after everything he dealt with, handling this little mob seemed like light work. Once that was taken care of, Dick began preparations to secure his new base. He cut down a tree and fashioned a couple of spears. While he would have preferred to survey his new surroundings as soon as possible, it was getting pretty late so he called it a day. With no telling how long the water and power would stay on, it seemed like a good idea for Dick to start to learn how to live off the land, so the seventh day began with him foraging out in the woods for materials, as well as dealing with any pesky walkers who bothered him. He also discovered a second house nearby, but as far as Dick could tell, it had already been looted, although whoever had done so at least had the decency to leave a little bit of food behind, which Dick quickly claimed for his own. However, we went back to his house to drop the food off. He soon found it to be a primary target of the undead, and upon heading back outside, discovered that a helicopter that had spotted him was the reason for this. With the reinforcements on his new base far from complete, Dick decided that his best bet was to try and make a stand back in Rosewood proper. So he drove back to his house, grabbed his hunting rifle, and set to work thinning the herd. One by one, the zombies would fall. However, despite Dick's best efforts, there didn't seem to be a light at the end of this particular tunnel. As much as it pained him, Dick knew that he was facing a losing battle and decided to abandon ship. While he'd been forced to flee, Dick did at least take some solace in the fact that his efforts had drawn the majority of the horde away from his second base, aside from a few stragglers who were easily disposed of. That night before he went to bed, Dick vowed to reclaim his main base from the undead if it was the last thing he did. Okay, and there you have it, 7 days and 485 dead zombies later, and I think it's safe to say old Dick here has had quite the eventful first week in hell. What's up everybody, Dusty here, I hope you enjoyed this video, if so leave a like and let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'm out. Peace.